Ah, uh, welcome everybody. You know this guy on the wall over here? That's William Joseph Blaskovich. Also known as BJ Blaskovich. BJ. Now what the hell has BJ got to do with Atari, you might wonder. Well, maybe later. But Bill was the main protagonist of the game Wolfenstein 3D. And on today's cover disc memoirs, we will be talking about an FPS game for our precious Atari ST. After witnessing the amazing demo of the game Obsession from SD format cover disc number 69, it was bye bye Bitnet Brothers for this guy and welcome Unity Development Sweden. They were now the true kings of Atari ST game creation. But this company had more in store for us. So for this memory, we are traveling back to the year of 1995. Ah, that's better. But did I just use the wrong intro? Ah, never mind. Isn't it weird that sometimes in life, looking back at it, you remember every single detail of a rather meaningless event that occurred in the past? And that is exactly what happened when SD Format showed a silly little screenshot of an FPS game in the news section of issue number 68. I remember exactly where I was when I opened up the magazine and I remember how uninterested my dad looked when I showed the screenshot to him. He was never a gamer to be clear. I on the other hand, I was drooling. I was super excited. Not only were we getting a first person shooter for the Atari ST, but it was also created by unique developments. You have to keep in mind that the announcement of Substation that's what the new UDS game was called, happened in March of 1995. By that time, my dad already abandoned his ST for over a year ago and we had a badass PC at home. So I had already slain zombies in Doom and Doom 2. Oh. Yep. Killed disciples and heretic. Blown enemies to bits and right of a triad. Outsider. Hell, I think I already fought Stormtroopers in the wonderful Dark Forces. Still, that was not on my Atari ST and I was such an ST freak, I really really wanted Substation. We had to wait till July 1995 before being able to play Substation. It was an issue number 72 that contained a playable demo and a full review of the game. And guess what? I went to the local newspaper store and I never found the magazine. I guess by 1995 nobody bought SD Format anymore and I was one of those guys who never got a subscription. I went to the local newspaper store every single month for years to get my copy of the magazine. SD Format issue number 72 was a pretty cool issue for gamers. We had a nice review of the STE only footy game team. And of course, we had Substation. A month later, I finally found a playable demo on an FTP server somewhere. So using my dad's 14.4K modem, I downloaded the copy, put it on a disc, and booted up my ST. And well, Substation was a cool game, but I just wasn't that excited anymore. I guess the PC bug finally took over. Wow, what a bummer. I'm not gonna end an episode like this. There must be more to tell about Substation or FPS games in general on the Atari ST, don't you think? Let's find out. Let's do a complete episode of ALTV. Let's do it right now. What just happened? What is this? Wait, let me try something.
don't hassle the half. I guess he meant it when he said it, right? Okay, so let's dive deeper into the world of first-person shooters on the Atari ST. I'm not talking about games that could be considered first-person shooters like Robocop 3 or Corporation. Nor am I talking about the granddaddies of the genre like Midi Maze or perhaps Dungeon Master. No, I'm talking about post-Doom games. Games released after 1993, in the midst of the Doom craze. We know the Atari ST can handle it, so let's check it out. The first game we're gonna talk about was released in 1996 and it's called Destruction Eminent. And of course, nobody has heard of this game because by 1996, this guy was unleashed to the gaming community. Still, looking back at it, Destruction Eminent was a technical marvel of a game. It runs on a vanilla ST and is enhanced for the STE. The game engine is really impressive and smooth, with distant shading and fogging, texture mapping and light source sprites. And on an STE, we get use of the 4096 color palette and DMA sound. Gameplay wise, all the features are there you come to expect from a 90s FPS game, such as a wide variety of weapons, animated monsters with their own characteristics, the ability to run and sidestep, hidden levels, in between level sequences and a password system, and much much more. There are some drawbacks. First is the level design, it's just too straightforward. All the levels look alike. And secondly, and most importantly, is the graphics. The game just isn't scary. I'm missing the creepy atmosphere. And the enemies? Well, they look a bit weird. With a decent pixel artist, this game could have been so much better. Still, it's obvious that cunning and devious designs, that's what the developer was called, put in a lot of love and effort into this package. It was for sale from Goodman for only £10 and for that price you really can't complain. And to think that the main programmer, Andrew Gower, was only 17 when he made this game? It's clear he was a really talented programmer. The name Andrew Gower might ring a bell to some, as Andrew started working on a game called Mudscape when he went to college. Mud stands for Multi-User Dungeon. Modscape was a text-based browser game completely programmed in Java. However, soon after, graphics were incorporated and the game was renamed to RuneScape. It was released as a beta version in 2001, Andrew and his brother started the company called Jagex, and well, the rest is history. RuneScape became the biggest free-to-play MMORPG with over 200 million accounts, and by 2010, Andrew was one of the richest young entrepreneurs in the UK. We already talked about the demo of Substation, but we are 2019 now and how do we feel about the game today? Substation has a lot of similarities compared to Destruction Eminent. First off, Main programmer Oscar Berman was also 17 years old when he started working on the game together with Michael Amtinger. In an interview with Atari Legend, Oscar stated the following. We had played Wolfenstein on the PC and were pretty convinced that with some clever programming tricks and using techniques from the demo scene, we could recreate it for the Atari. It was extremely challenging at times. Textures were not possible but we could get garage shaded walls to work. However, together with enemies, AI, HUD, etc., it was really challenging to get the game to run at a decent frame rate, and it forced us to push what was possible with the Atari ST. But eventually, we were happy with the end result. It wasn't the first first person shooter in the world, but probably the first for the Atari STE and a fun game in its own right. Substation also featured a multiplayer mode through MIDI port, which was kinda innovative back in the day. 
And the 3D sound system created by Tort Janssen is simply amazing and will surely creep you out. Also kind of special for this game genre is that Substation has got a great storyline. And even though the levels might look a bit samey in a typical bluish tone and there might not be any texture mapping going on, the actual level design and atmosphere are top notch. And because of all of this, Substation runs silky smooth on an STE. Substation is a hard game and the ending is very intense, so I'm told. I never made it that far. But what about that first question? How do we feel about Substation, which was probably one of the last biggest commercial releases for the system? How do we feel about the game today? Peter Zetterberg, one of the founders of Unity Development Sweden and the producer of this game, and by the way, he also posed as the diver on the box art of Substation, and he was responsible for the atmospheric story, he told SD Format the following. Each game we make, is a project of its own. Our ambition is not to produce any certain kind of games, but purely top quality ones in each game's respective niche. Obsession was such a game, and we aren't planning on stepping off on this path with Substation. So looking at it now, it's obvious Peter and his team accomplished this goal. The main problem, however, as stated before, is that Substation was just released too late in the lifespan of the Atari ST. Today, however, it's considered a classic and maybe one of the best titles released for the system. Also keep in mind we have detailed interviews with Oskar Berman and Tort Janssen available at atarilegend.com for those interested. I'll put the links in the description below. Now, let's check out the biggest, the baddest and the meanest release we will cover today. And just when you thought things couldn't get any better after the release of Substation, we have one more title to show you. One more game to prove the Atari ST can handle a true first person shooter. Because quite frankly, this is the game that started the whole genre back in 1992 on an MS-DOS machine. By the end of last century, a guy named Raymond Dratwa started converting the original Wolfenstein 3D to our humble Atari ST. And when I first witnessed the beta version in 2002, I was blown away. The game looked cool and played great on an 8 MHz machine. A true texture mapped 3D game. You might think, how is that even possible? Well, let's find out. Let's ask the man himself. If all goes well, we have Ray right here on the show. Is he ready? Hello Ray, it's a true honor. Thank you for being on the show. How are you feeling today? Hi Marty, thanks for having me on the show. Actually, I'm quite fine today. How are you? Yeah, well, I'm feeling great, especially now that you're here. So Ray, after your accomplishment of converting Wolfenstein 3D, you are considered one of the best programmers in the scene. How does that make you feel? I don't really think about whether I'm one of the best programmers in the scene. It's simply what I do and uh, I like what I do. And uh, if you like what you're doing, no matter what it is, you're going to try to do your best to be good at it. That's about all I can say. <laughs> Truly humble man, that's great. Ray, when did you get the idea of converting Wolfenstein 3D to the Atari ST? That seemed like an impossible task. When did it all start? It must have been in the mid 90s, around about the time when the game first came out and I saw it on the schoolmates PC. And I was quite impressed by what I saw, especially from a technical perspective. Back then I was still on the ST and we didn't have games like that, at least none that I was aware of at the time. And so that was when the idea was born to, to port it to the ST. And can you explain to a non-coder what the biggest challenges were in converting the game? 
Mm, that's a tough one, but I think one of the biggest challenges in the project was the way that pixel data are organized on the ST's VU hardware, which is in so-called bit planes rather than chunky data you had on the PC hardware where each pixel on the screen had a direct representation memory, for instance, a byte or a word. And that way it was very easy to do random access of uh, pixels. And it was very easy to draw vertical slices of texture map wall that would make up the game environment. And so on the ST you would have to um, use a so-called chunky to planner conversion routine which takes the data as output by the Wolfenstein 3D engine and converts it into the format expected by the video hardware of the yeah, ST. Ray, and, uh, you're, you're losing me, man. Of course, no. that takes up uh, quite a bit of CPU and that's one of the parts that will have to be optimized as much as possible in order to achieve a reasonable frame rate, yes. Uh-huh. Well, okay. Um, and finally, the obligatory question, of course. Wolfenstein 3D is not fully finished. What will happen now? To be honest with you, I think I will simply release the source code into the public domain at some point. I still have it sitting on my TT's hard drive, so it still exists, but I haven't revisited really in almost a decade, I think. Ray, I've always been a fan. It was a real honor having you on the show. Thank you so much for doing this. Again, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, goodbye, and uh, I really appreciate you doing this, Marty. It's uh, astounding to see that after all these years, there's still someone who cares about what I did more than 10 years ago. So thanks, and take care. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. If you want to learn more about Raymond, remember we have a detailed interview over at atarilegend.com. But wait friends, there's even more. So for those of you who played the original MS-DOS version of Wolfenstein, you may remember those iconic songs. And the Atari ST version also has some of them, and it was none other then Matthias Stempel, or better known as DMA SC, who added his own flavor to the tunes. And yes friends, you got it right, we have Mathieu today on the show. What's that? Can, can, can you please lower the volume a bit? Guys, guys, that, that's not Mathieu, that's Stefan Benz. He hasn't got anything to do with this game. Can you please cut the line? Cut the line. Stefan, yeah, um, please continue with your awesome synthwave songs. But we'll talk another time, okay? Bye. Oh, you gotta be kidding me. That's my sign. Yeah, okay. Bye, low tech. Yeah, bye. Guys, can we connect to Mathieu now? Can we do it right this time? What? what? On an Atari? How do you do this? Well, can we go to full screen? Well, hello Mathieu! You hear me? Welcome to the show! How are you doing? Hello Martin, thanks for the invitation. I'm fine and happy to be on the show. Sorry for all the confusion, it's a bit all over the place over here. Let's start talking about Wolf. You did the music for the game. How did it all start? And have you ever met Ray in real life? I think I remember to have met him at the demo party before the project. Probably the error in line. But when the project started, we most certainly discussed it on IRC. As a music job, these people are generally interested in converting existing tunes for ports. And it was a task. Can you tell us a bit about the process of making the music? You only converted five of the original songs. Why and how did you do it? Well, it was established from the start that there would be no in-game music. Most likely because the game engine itself would require all CPU time for an acceptable from rate. So what was needed was music for other sections of the game. 
like the title screen, interlude, victory screen. I converted music originally from the menu screen, the interlude screen, the high score screen, the ending screen, and also the first in-game tune, as it was pretty iconic and I wanted to convert it. Then I placed the tune in the appropriate section of the game, with the original in-game tune being used on the episode 6 screen. And were there any real challenges working on this project? I don't remember it to have been a complex job. Both 3D tunes are short and not super complex. Although there was no restriction on usable tune modulation, as the tunes were planned for section of the game without CP concerns. I used my chip tracker of choice back then, C2 Designer, which can do some nice seed modulation over the William sound. This allowed to make tune sounding more like a C64, but without its right additional filters. To convert the music, I analyzed original PC MIDI file, then I converted the basic structure of the tune over the 3YM channel. Then, when the basic structure was there, I added more elements to the music, converting chords to fast arpeggios, interleaving some instruments on some channel, and reaching composition this way. How do you feel about the project in general? Do you have any cool memories you want to share with the viewers? I've always enjoyed FPS, since first seeing Wolf 3D on PC. Back then, I played it on a 286 with a monochrome screen. And when Doom appeared, it was such a blast. After that, I was always eager on new FPS, like Quake and its sequels, Duke 3D, Medal of Honor on PS6, Half-Life, No One Live Forever, really cool one, and many more. What I liked in this game was the feeling of an open world, 3D exploration. Like when Tomb Raider appeared, it was pure exploration, amazing. So, I was also wishing for such an experience on ZST. I enjoyed a lot playing Alpha Wave, for example. Basic exploration, stressy control, but the immersion was already there for me. And when Substation was announced, I was really happy to see a Wolf 3D styled game running on STE. This game was really cool to play, with the various secrets to find, the backstory, the game mood, even the color variation in the level added to the mood. And there were even boss in the game. So, when Ray made public his Wolf 3D conversion, it was just like seeing the impossible. So I offered him to do music for the game and did it. Mathieu, thank you for doing this, thank you for your time and you have no idea how honored I am to have one of the best chippers on this show. Thank you and I hope we'll talk again. Normally I end every episode with some funny bloopers, but you know what? This time I don't have any. I think I'm getting the hang of this, so I will try something else. I will look at one more FPS game. Have you ever wondered what Doom looks like on the Atari ST? For now, I would like to thank my guests, Mathieu, Ray, Steve and Stefan. I would like to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the show, consider subscribing and for now, remember, stay Atari. Bye. Hellgate is a complete Doom ripoff. Programmed by a guy named Davis Walters, this game has got all the features of the id Software Classic. Even its looks. Well, kinda. Over the years, this game has gotten a lot of slack. And I really wonder why. Have a look.
But you know what? This game was completely programmed in STOS. And I will leave you all with that thought. Hellgate is a complete doom ripoff. Programmed by a guy named David Walters. Alright, Godverdomme!